Alliance, make sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you are not a current subscriber, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn the post notifications so you'll never miss a video. Thanks. Hey, what's going on guys? Cartridge Shake here and today I'm going to be showing you a really awesome card trick and tutorial. So, this trick is another impromptu one. You can do it anytime, anywhere, and it's also pretty easy actually. There is something that is a little bit difficult about this trick, but uh, we'll get into that when the tutorial comes on. And one thing I've noticed is my videos tend to be pretty lengthy. They're like 15 minutes and above, and part of that is due to the excessive amount of talking I do in the beginning and the ending of all my videos, kind of like I'm doing right now. So, I'm going to try to shorten up my videos by shutting up right now and just getting right into the trick. So, like I said, this is impromptu, so the spectators can shuffle up the cards as much as they desire. It really, truly does not matter how much they shuffle the cards. So, once they're happy with them, we're going to remove just over half the deck. We're going to remove 27 cards, so let's do that now. Okay, so you have 27 cards, and that's all we're going to be using for this effect. So the spectators can shuffle these cards up as much as they desire. So I'll hand the cards to them and let them shuffle the cards. So now, once they're done shuffling, I'm actually going to hand the pile to them and let them pick out any card they want. I just want to do this so this eliminates the possibility of any chance that I could be forcing a card. Now obviously I don't have a spectator with me, so I'm going to just pick out a random card. Now... Normally, for this trick, I'm not supposed to see the selection, but because I have no spectator with me, I have to see the selection for this one, and you'll see why as the performance goes on. In this case, they've chosen the Jack of Clubs, uh, excuse me, Spades. But now, there's also that element that I can control the card into any position that I wanted to. So also, to eliminate that theory, we're going to have the spectator place their card in it in the middle of the deck wherever they want and they can shuffle the cards up again just so there's no possible way I can know where their card is so now at this point there's 27 cards of course so I'm gonna have the spectator name any number from 1 to 27 it is a completely free choice so let's just say they pick 13 they can really name any number they want completely free choice so what's gonna happen is I'm going to deal three piles of cards and they're going to be face up. And when I'm done dealing them, all I want the spectator to do is tell me what pile they saw their card in. Now, obviously, like I said, I don't have a spectator, so I would never know, and no one else can tell me what pile the card in. So that's why, since I have no spectator, I have to look at the card for this performance, and we had the Jack of Spades. But again, normally in the performance, I would not know what the card is. They would be telling me just what pile it's in. So let's do it right now. We build the three piles, and I will speed this up so this doesn't take forever. Okay, so now we are done dealing, and then they would tell me what pile their card's in. Of course, we know the card is in this pile, it's a jack of spades. So, that's that. And now we are going to do it a second time. I'm going to deal the cards out, and then when, the, and when I'm done, they're just going to tell me what pile they saw the card in. So, I'm just going to speed this up, of course, to show this doesn't take forever. So now the spectator saw their card in this pile, so they'll say, okay, it's in this pile. I'm like, okay. And one last, one last time, we're going to do it again. The other cards face up, and when I'm done, just tell me what pile you saw your card in. Okay, so now once again, they'll say it was in that pile. So now that is that. Okay, so let's recap. So we pulled out 27 cards. They shuffled up the cards as much as they want. They freely selected a card. They shuffled their card back to the pack, so there's no way I could have controlled it. Then we just kind of dealt the piles out randomly, and all they did was just let me know what pile they saw their card in. So that was a lot of mixing up of the cards there. But here's the interesting thing, is the spectator gave me a freely chosen number before the trick really started. It was... What'd they say? I think 13, correct? I'll hand the cards to them, and I'm basically just going to tell them to count out 13 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and the 13th card should be their selection, the Jack of Clubs. 
So anyways guys, that is the trick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So now let's get straight into it. So hopefully you stuck around for the tutorial. So now I know you're looking at this and you're like, what in the world am I looking at? Well, this is the reason that makes the trick a little bit difficult for the first few times. Um, the trick is easy. There's no, you know, sleight of hand or anything like that. But it does require a lot of memorization. And what, what you have to memorize, you need to memorize this right here. This chart needs to be memorized by heart to pull off this trick in front of people because obviously you don't want to have this in front of people while you're performing. This is going to be your cheat sheet in your brain that you need to have. So, um, the first few parts of the trick are all legit. They can really pick any card and they can put it back and shuffle the cards up. That's all legit. There is no force or nothing like that. No controls, no force, nothing. All of that is fairly legit. Now, obviously, for each round, we deal the cards out three times, right? The pile with their card obviously has to be on the top of the other piles, the middle of the other two piles, or the bottom of the other two piles. It has to be either one, obviously, right? Now, the number that they give you, which is obviously the position their card is going to end up in at the end, is going to determine for each round what position the, their pile is going to be in. And this chart is going to help you out with that. So, let's have a scenario here. They pick a card and they shuffle it back up. Okay, great. So now I'm going to say, okay, name any number from 1 to 27. So I'm going to start off easy for you guys. Let's say they name a one-digit number. Let's say they say 8. Okay, if you know, for card tricks, they say 8. So, before I get into this, I'm going to explain what the, what the chart is and what, you should, what it's supposed to look like to you. There are three rows... One, two, and three is the top row. Four, five, and six is the middle row. Seven, eight, nine is the bottom row. That's what this T, M, and B stands for. Top row, middle row, bottom row. Okay, so that's simple enough, right? And now, the reason why I have the numbers lied out in this fashion is because you can see one is the top number of this top row. Two is the middle number of this top row. Three is the bottom number of this top row. And so on. 4 is the top, 5 is the middle, 6 is the bottom, 7... Okay, you, you get the idea. So, that's that. This, this is the top row, this is the middle row, this is the bottom row. Then these are the positions of the row that the numbers are in. And then this is the range of numbers, and I'll get into that a little bit as the tutorial goes on. But now, let's say they give you number 8. This is going to determine where the piles go. So now... I deal the cards out into three separate piles, and they're going to tell me what pile their card's in. So now, I need to place their pile on the top, the middle, or the bottom of the other two packets. So now, the way I do this is by referring back to what number they said and the chart. So they said 8 in the beginning. So if they say 8, I'm going to memorize this, and I'm going to think to myself, okay, 8 is the middle number of the bottom row. So that means the first round... The pile with their card goes in the middle of the other two. And the second round, the pile with their card goes in the bottom of the other two. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And then what's going to happen is, is the third round, you're going to refer to the ranges. And you're going to think, is the number 8 from 1 to 9, 10 to 18, or 19 to 27? And wh whichever range it's in, in this case it's in 1 to 9, whichever range it falls into, that's where you're going to put it. 1 to 9 is with the top row, 10 to 18 is with the middle row, and 19 to 27 is with the bottom row. So 8 is 1 to 9, and that is in the top row range, so that means the third round, their pile is also going to go on the top. And then from there, mathematically, just deal out 8 cards, and then that's where the card's going to be. So it's really not that hard, it's just memorizing this chart. So now I'll give you another example. Let's say they pick uh, 3, they pick 3, right? So, I deal out the cards in three piles. They tell me where the pile is. So now, if they say three, I think to myself, okay, three is the bottom number of the top row. So that means the first round, the pile with their card is going to go on the bottom, and the second round, the pile with their card is going to go on the top. And then I think, the number three, what range is that in? 1 to 9, 10 to 18, or 19 to 27? It's in 1 to 9, so therefore the third round, the pile with their card goes in the top. You see? Not that hard. But now... Obviously, what if they give you a two-digit number? Because, you know, it's, you, you only have a chart of one to nine here. What do you do if you have a two-digit number? 
So this is pretty much the same exact thing. There's just one thing you have to remember, otherwise you actually could screw up the entire thing. So let's say what let's say they give you a two-digit number. Uh, let's use 13, if that's what I use in the performance. If they give you a two-digit number, what you're gonna do is is you are going to add the two digits together in your head. So they give me 13. So I think one plus three is four. Now you're going to follow the same exact rules now with your new one digit number. So I think four. Four is the top number of the middle row. So that means the first round, the pile with their card goes in the top. The second round, the pile with their card goes in the middle. Now, this is the part where you need to make sure you do not mess up. This is where you everyone tends to screw up the first time. Is now, you're, you cannot think to yourself, does 4 go from 1 to 9, 10 to... No, you cannot do that because they did not pick 4. They picked 13. So, when they give you a two-digit number, you add the two digits together. And then, again, I use 13, so I have 4, right? So I think, okay, 4 is the top number of the middle row. So those are the same rules, right? But for the third round, you need to refer back to the original number. So the original number they picked was 13. So that means I think it's 13 from 1 to 9, 10 to 18, or 19 to 27. 13 is from 10 to 18, so that means the third round, the pile with their card goes in the middle. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So I'll go over that one more time. Let's say they pick 17. So if they pick 17, I'm going to add the two digits together to make a one-digit number. 1 plus 7 is 8. So 8 is the middle number of the bottom row. So that means the first, the first two rounds are going to be the pile goes in the middle, and then it goes on the bottom. And then for the third round, I don't want to remember 8 now. I need to refer back to the original number, since it was a two-digit number. And the original number they gave was 17. So I think it's 17 from 1 to 9, 10 to 18, or 19 to 27. And then 17 is from 10 to 18, so the third round, it goes in the middle. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. So just by memorizing this chart, you can easily do this. So, yeah... That is pretty much it. I know that was a little bit complicated, so if you're still confused and you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So, yep, that is pretty much it. So I will see you guys in the next one when it comes to Magic Follow Your Dreams. Card Tricks 8, signing off. Peace out.